I spoke way, way too soon. At least that one's got a hat on. Hello everyone and welcome back to Knader Gaming and today we're playing some more Minecraft modded Ocean Block and yes This hat is amazing, but now let's talk about some things that have changed since the end of the last episode I went ahead and doubled our lava production from the tempered glass jars as we have this heat generator now Which uses lava and we're actually running out of lava So I went ahead and doubled our production and included some blue magma blocks under here which actually increased the speed of making lava from 1 minute to 15 seconds. So now this is filling up much faster. I went ahead and made a crusher. That way we can crush some materials that we need. I went ahead and made the basic energy cube. That way we could actually be making use of the lava that we're making. So we can produce energy. And we had a llama spawn. Now I don't fully understand how he spawned. I'm guessing he spawned here. Because I was doing a little bit of reading. And it looks like the only way you can get... Regular mobs to spawn such as cows chickens and whatnot is to have an area they can spawn on That is in the deep warm ocean biome, which is what we're in right now So I'm guessing the llama spawned over here. That's where I first saw him So we're gonna leave him alone for a little bit and you may have seen that there was a triple question mark over there That is a special structure that I found while exploring the region as you can see here This is the map and if you zoom up I found this thing I don't know what it is, but I think we might have to explore it by the time we get to the end of the episode. Now, if you saw me open my inventory, you may notice I have a bunch of tool parts in my inventory from Tinker's Construct. Some blocks of bronze, you might be wondering. Are we finally going to get Tinker's set up? Yes, we are finally going to set up Tinker's Construct. Something I don't know why I've waited so long to do. But we're going to go ahead and get that set up. That way we can finally get some decent tools as we have enough minerals to do it. I just hadn't done it yet. So let's get straight into that. Now the book that I'm reading, Puny Smelting, tells me to start off with something like that. However, I don't want to start with something that small. I mean, I'm not used to Tinker's starting with something like that. I'm used to, you know, uh, the huge big area if you've ever seen other mod packs that have Tinker's Construct, and right now, sorry, random distraction, my, my S key randomly won't work. So sometimes I can walk backwards, sometimes I can't. Let's hope that doesn't become a, a major factor. As you can see here, I have all the tool parts that I can make right now, as hopefully we'll be making the uh, golden tool cast for all of them this episode. But yeah, first we need to create some grout, which, if I remember correctly, grout is not too hard to make. I believe it's just clay. Sand and gravel. Yep, it's still just as easy as it was before. I actually don't know how much we need, because each one represents one seared brick. Each, well, whenever you have four seared bricks, you can make one seared bricks. <laughs> that was redundant. And you can make all the other crafts from it. So uh, we're just going to make a bunch and we'll move on from there. So we've now got all of our grout cooking. Got quite a bit of seared brick already. And I think after reading this book, I think we're just going to start with making the melter. The very basic kind of forge that we can create. Because once we create that, we'll be able to make the mighty smelting book. Which I think will show us how to make an improved version of our forge so we're gonna start off with just the basic one it's not too complex looks like we just need that and that okay we've made our seared casting basin seared casting table seared faucet our seared heater these are all for the melter now the only piece we're missing is our seared melter the actual heater itself we have enough bricks for it we just need to get some glass which i have smelting right now we got three of it so far so we've almost got enough Let's go ahead and get the blocks in there now. Slide these two in here. And voila. That is everything we need for the basic smelter. I'm going to go ahead and just put that right here. So that'll go there. I believe that will go there. And yeah, I think that's everything for this. Now, I don't really know how this works. I believe this one doesn't use lava like the other ones. I don't know. I think this one uses solid fuel like coal and whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and try that. 
Stick some coal in here. Uh, maybe stick some coal in here. How does this work? Oh, I bet I have to actually have something to smelt. Let me just put that in there. Aha, here we go. This is how it works. You have to put in your fuel as well as whatever you're wanting to cook. Now, we have one seared ingot in here, which is actually what I want because now if I craft a book... Oh, hopefully I have a spare one lying around somewhere. I don't. Guess we'll be making that real quick. All right, we have our book, so I believe I'm just going to slap it down there. It looks kind of weird that we're going to smell a... Uh, <laughs> book right now so slide that in there and it should give us haha mighty smelting now this is more like it this is more the forgery that we're going to be trying to make so even though we just crafted this i think it's already time for us to destroy it and replace it with the bigger version and so i'm going to do a little bit of reading in this book that i just made and hopefully we'll have a much mightier forge set up. Oh, actually, this is the forge I was just thinking, uh, just talking about. This is what it looks like. Wow, it, it, it is a little different. They have uh, definitely updated it. So before it was a lot more basic, so I, I like this design. I like this kind of more modern look at the front of the uh, forge here. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> looks like we're going to have to make our uh, heater back as we need to smelt some things in it to create the next blocks, which is okay. It wasn't too hard to make. I may have also forgot to mention the reason it's so important important for us to make this is this essentially is going to double our uh, mineral production as right now everything in here is just getting smelted into exactly what it should be. So nine gold clusters is going to get us one block and so on and so forth. But this a, a big professional tinker's forge doubles your ingots. Which is very, very convenient, as it's very nice to get uh, double everything that you smelt. So, we've almost finished our upgraded smelt tree. All we have left is to place a couple of these final blocks here. And, of course, I left the, the, the brains of the smelt tree for last. But to actually make it, we have to throw in a heater, which is this part right here. And we actually have to... Oh, well, how does this work? I thought I knew how it worked. Oh, I'm in the wrong... Got the wrong block here. So, I need to go grab that real quick. Because that was the actual block I needed, which means... Put that there, put in our seared heater, and voila! We now have... Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. The Smeltry Controller. And that is a fully operational smell tree. So if I put this here, and that's, I believe, that's everything I wanted to get ready. Yeah. Wow. That's how many slots we have to cook with now, as opposed to the three, this one. I've got lava in this one because I figured that would be the best. Um, I did not make a way to look inside of that. I mean, we don't have to look inside of it, but, I mean, it would have been kind of nice. You can actually craft seared louders which we might do eventually but yeah wow that thing looks awesome so we're gonna go ahead and let's just make a let's make a basic tool out of this what what kind of i feel like a sword would be a good actually hold up let me show you this thing right here this is a tinker's anvil now we already made our tools out of the tool station here so this can make some of the basic ones now this is the Tinker's Anvil. And it can make all those items already, plus some even better ones here. Eventually, we're gonna make a cleaver because every time I play a mod pack, this one always ends up being my favorite. Although, the broad axe, I know it's technically used for cutting down trees. I'm not gonna lie. It looks like a pretty sweet weapon as well. But we'll figure out something and then we'll go ahead and make a new weapon using our brand new forge. So I realized before I go ahead and make my new weapon, I actually need to go ahead and cast some of these gold casts, which is just a part of Tinkers that makes it so you can actually forge new items out of these new materials. Now I think for the soul, we're going to go ahead and use obsidian, steel, and I haven't figured out my third material yet. I'll figure something out, but first we're going to go ahead and try and get some of these special gold cast which i'll show you 
how we're going to do that. It's actually, excuse me, the reason I made all of these. Because if I run over here, put this down, right click on that. You'll see it fills it up. And there we go. We now have the gold cast. And we're going to do that, so on, so forth, until we have all of them. So, yeah. Got interrupted by a blizz. Uh, again. Turns out if snow lands in there, uh, it stops working. It didn't break. It just, you know, stops working. But we did get a, uh, blizz cube out of it. <laughs> yeah. Those guys are really getting on my nerves. And now phantoms. Why am I not surprised? Ah, oh, that takes care of those guys. Eventually, I'll get this done. If there's no more interruptions. I spoke way, way too soon. At least that one's got a hat on. And now it's raining. What's better than phantoms and rain? You know, I have a bed. I really don't have an excuse on getting attacked by phantoms over and over again. Come back here. I'm not done with you. There we go. Okay, uh, before I do anything else... Oh, by the way, happy uh, May the 4th. I forgot that was today, and uh, one of the mod packs, Mechanism, actually helped remind me. So, uh, yeah, another reason why Mechanism is the best mod pack ever is they actually wish you a happy May 4th. Alrighty, after spending a lot of time smelting, figuring things out, figuring out how to alloy things, which alloying is when you combine multiple minerals to create something like pig iron, which is the combination of clay, iron, and, um, blood, uh, I have successfully got everything I need to craft a sword. Now, I'm not gonna go and craft a cleaver yet, as when I craft the cleaver, I want it to be the best of the best material. So, we're just gonna start with this. I have a steel blade for damage and durability it also has ductile one which pretty much makes it so it can perform better and faster than other materials i have whatever that is uh, all i know is it increases attack damage and helps me deal more damage and then pig iron which helps my durability a little bit and it also is tasty i don't fully know what that means but i like the idea of it so we're gonna go ahead and make our steel sword. I love the look of it. I can tell you that. I love that pink edge that it has. I think it looks fantastic. Oh, we also crafted all of our gold casts. We're only missing one, but it's for the coin, which I've never heard of, and I don't know what it is. We might make it eventually, but as for right now, we don't need it. I say we go test our sword on something. Uh, I think that slime volunteered to be a test subject for the lethality of our sword. Hooah! 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 Uh, uh. Ouch. Well, we got a polar bear mask. I think it worked great. Although, I think attacking a slime was probably not the greatest test. Eventually, we'll be fighting better and hopefully more dangerous mobs as we go along. But right now, I can safely say that this sword is awesome. What kind of surprises me, though, is there's no quest for anything tinkers related which is very rare maybe it's somewhere in this path i don't know we won't worry about it anyway we do have a couple quests to claim but we'll wait as usual to the end of the episode before we claim any of them i think we're now going to go ahead and go to our mystery island over there although if i remember anything is that these boats are really hard to maneuver so uh this might take a second and there we go we're on our way to the mysterious, uh, tower. Uh, I guess you'll see what it is when we get there. Hopefully our new sword will hold up and prove its worth if there's any bad guys there. Which I don't actually know because I, I went there, looked at it, and went, I'm gonna leave this for later. There we go. That is what I saw from a distance and I just knew I had to investigate. Um... I haven't gone out this far, so it might lag just a little. Let's go around it real quick. See if there's a door. Aha, there is a door. All right, here we go. Let's go inside the mysterious building. Well. Uh. 
looks like there is a loot crate in there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, dig in there. Oh, there is water. Oops. Did not realize that. Can we go to... Whoa! Hey, I think that's actually a quest. It is! Oh, but apparently they're only found in the nether? Uh... I don't think this is the nether, but uh, either way, we're going to loot it. What are we going to get? Crying obsidian and a soul lantern. Cool. Let's go ahead and break this other one. Uh, it didn't break for us, so I guess we'll try that again. Oh, it, <laughs> there it goes. It just glitched out a little bit. Let's go claim these items real quick. I think that was just a regular iron tool head. And the other one. Uh, I didn't see the other item. I don't know where it went. Oh, it was netherrack. So we got an iron pickaxe head, crying obsidian, netherrack, soul lantern. Well, I mean, that's not terrible. There's worse things we could get. I might take these soul lanterns. I don't know. A soul lanterns valuable for anything? I mean, I know they're not too hard to make. Nope, they're not. Okay. Well, that was cool, but kind of... I don't want to say a letdown, but... There weren't any bad guys there or anything, so... Oh, well. That's not terrible. Speaking of getting netherrack, I think... Ah, uh, I don't know. I'm debating between going to the nether... And exploring the ocean. Like, actually going down there. I don't know. Which one should I do, guys? The problem is, you guys can't tell me because this isn't like a live stream or anything. I think we're going to go ahead and go to the nether. That is a quest that we're up to. It seems very important as cobalt, which is a mineral found only in the nether. I think it would be very helpful if we went so we could get that. Now, going there is actually very different. You actually craft paintings. I may have mentioned this in an earlier episode, but you craft a painting. Oh, excuse me. I got the hiccups every time I start recording. You get a painting, you right click on it, or I don't know. I, I haven't made it yet. And it teleports you there. But I think they might be only one use. So if we go, we're going to have to like actually go and plan it, get ready for it. I mean, I don't think there's too much to plan for, because I don't think it's too expensive to go there. But you actually have to make sure you craft an overworld painting so you can get back. Because if you don't craft an overworld painting, uh, you get stuck in the nether. And the only way out is um, certain death, so not really worth it. And, oh, we're going to crash. Now, to make it, you actually have to use a tempered glass jar. And I'm just going to take this one as we filled up our jumbo tank with 1,024 buckets. None of this is needing energy right now, so we're going to go ahead and steal that. We just need a regular heated tempered glass jar, so I'll just place a magma block. And let's see if we can find it. Here we go. So this is an end painting here. So you have Eye of Ender with Ender Pearls, and painting makes the end painting. Now if I keep going down, here we go. Here's the nether painting. We just need four netherrack painting and four obsidian, and here's our overworld painting. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Make both of those. We now have everything we need to make our paintings. So we'll go overhead, go overhead, go over here, craft our overworld painting. Wow, does not take very long. And now to craft our nether painting. There we go, found our paintings. Now I believe they take up a four by four. So we'll go ahead and do 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 do. I don't know. I, I'm kind of nervous about this, so we'll put it over here. Put it a little distance away. And... Hwa! 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 Okay. Clearly, I need to look something up. And just as I thought, it's a, uh, not exactly what I thought. It's a 4x2 area, so... Like that? Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. What? That is so cool. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and grab some more for the uh, overworld painting when we get there. Get out of here. Hey, that's that hat I was talking about. The other one. Oh, we also got another hat. The sky... Are those? 
Those are. Those are pillagers. And I think we need to uh, quickly attack those pillagers before we go to the nether. This will be a good test of our new sword. Hopefully I don't die, because I don't really have anything to fight back, uh, to block their arrows with, so. We need to get that banner. Oh yeah, wow, that is how you do it. Got the ominous banner. We also have the bad omen effect, but something tells me we are uh, not going to be going near any villagers anytime soon. In fact, I don't even, I don't even know how you find villagers in this. Now that I say it out loud, I don't even know if that's a thing. Huh, I'm kind of curious, but oh well. All right, enough talk. Let's go to the nether. Okay, apparently you don't walk into it. Maybe it's a right click. Um... Huh. 